I'm Rose, the Permaculture Gardener, and I am here to tell you a little bit about how to start the foundation of your food forest. I'm going to talk a little bit about the fundamentals of starting a food forest. I'm going to show you what we have done and how it's worked out. What you doing, Ryan? I am digging a hole. You're really good at digging holes, aren't you? Yeah. In the Georgia red clay? You could say so. <laughs> so we are working on the front yard food forest today. Getting some plants in the ground. We got some bare root and some almost bare root because the soil all came out. Plants that need to be planted today. We cannot wait. So this one that he's planting here is a dwarf Cavendish banana. It will produce fruit on good years, so I'm really looking forward to that. We have these ornamental bananas we planted over here on the other side of the driveway, so I think it'll complement nicely. So we have some hazelnuts and apples and gooseberries. Or are those currants? Currants? Gooseberries? I don't remember. Well, that's why I was confused, because one is a currant, and the other two are gooseberry. So we've evaluated that where that post is, and that post is, would be perfect for the hazelnuts. And then the fig is over there by the windows. I told Ryan, I said, I want to be able to reach out my window and pick a fig. So, right there is my bedroom window. I can pick a fig in a few years. And then for the smaller fruits, we're just going in between. Wherever we find a spot, we'll just plop in fruit in between these bigger trees to create an excellent understory. <laughs> so we got the ground cover of strawberries, which are doing amazing. I need to get out. I need to have Odin go get me a bowl and pick them. And then the shrub layer, which is the blueberries, currants, and gooseberries, etc. I got asparagus down in that ditch, wildflowers all throughout. And then mulberries are smaller, and the dwarf apples are smaller, and the hazelnuts are smaller. So there's different sizes all throughout here to complement each other and support each other. Of course, it's important to include your native pollinators. And this is a green-headed coneflower, it's native. And then adding alliums helps with deterring pests. So we have the wonderful permaculture plant of the Egyptian walking onions. These will drop down and set more fruit and we'll have onions everywhere. Of course, you can't have a permaculture food forest without dynamic accumulators like Comfrey. And we've even had some native plantain move into the area as we've begun working here. This was last year's basil, hoping that some of those seeds will sprout around and attract even more pollinators. We were very fortunate to have a dear friend of ours come and help us do a lot of this work last year to get the mulch around and things planted around. So I'm going to show you some of that video here. <laughs> So we are busy putting a three to four foot ring, foot deep of mulch around each of the large fruit trees in the fruit orchard. And then we're gonna plant our understory plants. So we've got some comfrey, we've got some Thai basil, and over here in the garden, we have some Egyptian flocking onions. So we're gonna dig up and divide these. You can see each one of the bulbs I planted Last year has turned into several bulbs and they're producing several bulbs. I call this the sharing plant. It's great to share with friends that stop by that also garden. You can just be like, oh, do you have walking onion? Here, have some and rip a piece off the top and hand it to them. <laughs> so much fun. We've now got all the kids out here working together to get more mulch moved. And we've got Walking onions, basil, comfrey, 
Um, we have some native wildflowers like this green cone rutabecchia and uh, a few other things that we're planting. I've got some lemon balm around the two front apple trees, not front, back apple trees. So a little bit of clever planting to keep a healthy ecosystem around our plants. We are going through the areas that are going to be remulched and removing this one type of grass that comes up through mulch really aggressively. So we're getting rid of it. If I had enough cardboard, of course I would do everything in cardboard first and then all the mulch, but I figured we'll just get the most aggressive grass out of the way with a shovel, remove it from the roots and then put the mulch down and it should suppress the other um, species in that circle. Most of the stuff out here isn't really that bad and that aggressive. It's a lot of native plantain and false dandelion and things that don't really take over for a tree. So we've been busy getting all the plants planted around, but we're also adding in some other fruit trees and bushes that have needed to be out here and I needed to go get some more walking onions. And I just wanted to show you how huge these bulbs have gotten on these. I planted these in the summer of last year. That's pretty amazing. I never knew that Egyptian walking onions would actually form a big bulb like this. I thought I was just gonna use them as greens. So this is a nice surprise for our family to have a perennial onion that we can harvest at any time. We have all of this mulch pile still that needs to move. What do you want me to do? Oh, but I thought you were helping me dig. <laughs> He's like, you need me to dig a hole? I said, yep. So he dug a hole. That's about big enough for a strawberry plant. I heard you're getting some in the mail soon. Are you excited for more strawberries? You want to pick some strawberries? That was just the ditch berries, y'all. Just the ditch berries. After we plant each tree, we put a ring of fertilizer slash AKA compost. That helps feed the plant and improve the soil slowly, not drastically. So the plant, the soil, and the organisms can all adjust. And then we'll cover it all with a nice big thick layer of mulch. I was very fortunate to get two helpers this weekend so that we could get some of our food forest plantings done because we received a lot of gifts from a very kind, generous soul. I've also been selling some plants that I started and something that I've always done is if you have something that you want to barter instead of buying a plant, I'll trade. What do you got? I'll trade it with you. So uh, several friends have come by with plants that they dug up from their gardens to share with us. And they got some plants from our garden that we shared with them. And it's turned out very good for our food forest. So right here in the front of the barn, I've started a new area of food forest. We've got sunchokes. We're gonna mulch this and have it be a flower bed, but right now, this is as far as we got. <laughs> so don't mind the messy weed. We've got sunchokes or Jerusalem artichokes, garlic chives, and sunchokes. These will take over this area, so I thought this was a really good place to have them. That The blooms would look pretty against the barn, and it'll be really nice once we fill it in with some other pollinator flowers and stuff. And then along this side of the barn, we planted our cane fruit. So we have cane fruit and strawberries. So we have three and yellow from Stark Brothers. Then we have one my friend brought me to trade. 
Uh, another one that was gifted to us from one of the volunteers that came and helped work with us. It's a heirloom. Let me see if I can remember correctly. Uh, it's a red raspberry. That one's a yellow. Then one of these is another Stark Brothers yellow. Yeah, this one's double gold. And then these were from my friend's garden and they're a yellow raspberry. And then coming down this way, we have the start of our secondary food forest. So as I showed you last time, we have the cane fruit going down this section of the fence where where uh, it won't get eaten by cows or goats because we have the coop right here. And there are strawberries now planted underneath. Oopsie, looks like somebody pulled out a strawberry. I knew that was gonna happen. This, this area does have some free range birds so they could be a problem but I'll put bird netting around them if it if it becomes more serious so then we have our fruit trees that we were gifted we've got strawberries all around and garlic uh, late planting of garlic just because we had leftovers and this is a cherry and then we've got comfrey that one of our friends brought us to share and then we've got a plum that was gifted us, strawberries, garlic, and comfrey. And then we have a kitty on the nest. Oops, I just scared her off. Sorry. Sorry, honey. And we've got comfrey, strawberries, and garlic around this apple tree. This apple tree was planted a week earlier and it's already got flower buds developing. And then over here we have another apple tree with comfrey, garlic, and oh, it doesn't look like we got strawberries in this one. I thought we did. We might have missed one, but we still have more strawberries to plant. So then we got a hole dug in the middle for a mulberry and we have another apple tree coming. So we've been super busy putting in this new food forest. It's kind of a messier area of the homestead that doesn't get used as often. So hopefully this will make it more attractive. As we go, we're gonna put more and more mulch, more and more plantings, just like the front yard food forest. So over time, it'll look a lot better. There you have it. All this could be yours in just a few years. Most of these plants are only a year or two, maybe three years old. And we're already getting fruit production and lots of beautiful flowers to enjoy. Follow along and see how our food forest grows and becomes a large canopy of wonderful fruit bearing trees. So if you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel and follow along for more videos in the future.